don't, don't, don't call me Superman if you haven't found my kryptonite. What is going on YouTube? It is the BK Cops 360 here and it's official. Polaris 10 is not going to be AMD's flagship GPU. It's not going to be the 490 or the 490X. Now, essentially, uh, a few days ago, they went out and said that, look, we're classifying uh, Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 for that matter as mainstream GPUs. Now, if we go back to 2014 and 2015, AMD had four different sections, enthusiast, performance, mainstream and value. Now, mainstream was the third section down and it had stuff like the 265 or the 7850, the 260X, the 260, relatively low end GPUs. Now, if AMD is saying Polaris 10, specifically Polaris 10 for um, the context or the purpose of this video is uh, in the mainstream segment, then I believe that AMD is starting to consolidate these segments or they're at least saying, look, um, we consider the mainstream segment to be a little bit more powerful than what it used to be in the past. So I believe they'll probably either get rid of that whole performance segment and then just have three, enthusiasts, mainstream and value. So I've, I'll have a graphic up to see or to show you guys what exactly I'm talking about so you have a bit of context. But yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, moving on, Polaris 11 is also going to be in this mainstream segment. And they're also both going to be targeting that high-end laptop market. So you'll see Polaris 10 probably as um, the... What's the word? The Oh, fuck. I'm having a really big mind blank. Polaris 10 is probably going to be the... Ah! Ah! Oh, this is really pissing me off, man. It's going to be the flagship laptop GP. Sorry. Uh, it'll be... <laughs> I can't believe it took me so long to figure that out. Uh, Polaris 10 will be uh, the laptop's flagship card, if that makes sense. So we'll probably be seeing 2,304 stream processors on a laptop and have that be uh, AMD's highest performing laptop chip. That in itself is great to hear. Um, continuing on, we'll also have Polaris 11. That's the one that's got the really, really good uh, power to performance ratio. Uh, if that makes sense, uh, I believe the Plus 11 chip was demoed against the GTX 950 in Star Wars Battlefront and was using around half uh, the wattage as a GTX 950. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that uh, NVIDIA with Pascal isn't going to come out with something equally as impressive, but I'm just giving guys some context. That is what we're going to be seeing in the future, and the future truly is looking very very bright and continuing on Polaris 10 for that matter was also demoed in the new Hitman 1440p max settings and it was achieving a consistent 60 frames per second now albeit it was a relatively small and short test however it just showed you how powerful Polaris 10 is going to be and it's to see something like that in a laptop something getting 1440p max setting 60 fps in a laptop is insane absolutely insane and to see that on the desktop as well it's obviously not going to be the flagship as i've said before but it's going to be maybe the 480 and the 48 480x card sorry it's a good thing to look forward to man i'm really really looking forward to it so yeah guys i mean get hyped that kind of performance in hitman that puts that gpu at around the fury x and to have that fury x come down a tier is quite impressive i mean realistically it's coming down two tiers because we had last generation we had the fury x the fury um you know the fury 90 or whatever then we had the 290x and the 290 or the 390x and the 390 um the few that fury x card is kind of moving down two tiers it's moving past that 290 or you know what we would call now 490 tier and it's going down to the 480 i'd assume at the very least I mean, it could be going down to the 470, 470X. Maybe AMD is really going to surprise us. And this is only going to be the 470X Polaris 10, 1440p, 60fps max settings. I doubt that's going to be the case. I'm pretty sure that Polaris 10 will encompass the 480 and the 480X. But you never really know. We're going to have to wait and see. And essentially, we're going to have the 490 and the 490X be Vega, the, the big daddy, HBM2, uh, massive hype, massive memory bandwidth. That's what everyone's waiting to see. AMD's massive, true successor to the Fury series, the big flagship. So, 
yeah, that GP will be coming much later on in the year. Uh, HBM2 isn't ready yet, so we're not going to be seeing it yet. And we're not going to be seeing HBM2 or GDDR5X, for that matter, in any of these upcoming GPUs if they're launching within the next two to three months. Because GDDR5X is not ready for mass production just yet. AMD and NVIDIA, if they choose to release their GPU soon, just won't be able to use it. It's going to be unlucky for them. But let's be honest, guys, we can wait. HBM2 is what everyone's waiting for. Um, Big Daddy Pascal, Big Daddy um, Polaris, I mean Vega, essentially. People are waiting for that as well. But for now, we've got some really good shit coming up. And yeah, so look, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And look, tell me what you think. I mean, is Polaris 10, you know, we all know Polaris 11, that's going to be cool. But Polaris 10 is the most powerful of the two coming out. Is it going to be the 480 and the 480X? Or is it going to still be the 490 and the 490X and then we have AMD bring out you know, the Vega chip as, you know, like a random card, like a Fury 2, like version 2 or some shit. I highly doubt that's going to happen because in the past, AMD have branded the, the 90, the X90 cards. So, for example, the 290 and the 290X or the 390 and the 390X, they brand those cards in the enthusiast segment. So it's unlikely that they're going to call Polaris 10 a 490 and a 490X if they're considering it to be a mainstream GPU. So look guys, thank you guys for watching. Once again, I hope you enjoyed and a big K will see you later.